Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for staying with Politics Tonight. And now to our interview with the guest of the day. I am joined by the Minister of State for Health and Social Welfare, Dr. Tunji Alausa, for discussion on President Tinubu's health care agenda. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for joining us this evening. <clears throat> thank you so much, Jumoke. Right. I mean, it was just uh, on Friday uh, where we had a very interesting conversation with Professor Ali Pate. It was interesting to know what the federal government is doing to boost uh, women, women's health at the primary and secondary levels, primary health care delivery, and, and so forth. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. And let's begin tonight's conversation with availability of doctors. Nigeria has a doctor-to-population ratio of one doctor to 8,000. You would agree with me, uh, Honorable Minister, that this figure is very low. What steps are you taking to bridge this gap? Yeah, thank you, Jim Okay, We're taking several steps to bridge uh, uh, the human resource for uh, crisis or workforce shortage that we have in the country. You would have heard a president, President Bola Metinumbu, um, and at various fora, he spoke on the importance of why we need to quickly and in a very short uh, time, in an aggressive manner, increase the number of healthcare workers in our country. And it's giving us a clear mandate to harness the huge population that we have to aggressively produce more healthcare workers in the country. Now, I'll tell you what we're doing. We're approaching this in a multifaceted way. The first is we are aggressively increasing production. We've increased the number of enrollments in all our medical specialties for doctors, for dentists, for nurses, for pharmacists. With nurses, before we came in as a government, we were enrolling 28,000 um, students in our nursing school. Today, I'm happy to let you know, we're enrolling about 68,000 nurses in all our nursing school across the country. By the end of this year, 2024, we will be enrolling at least 120,000 nurses in our nursing school. We know some of, the, some of these healthcare workers will leave, but it's a free world. They can leave, but as we continue to produce more, we will able, we'll be able to fill in the gap. Beyond increasing production, we're also looking at harnessing our diaspora population to come in and help us to, in the areas of training and also in areas of manpower. The other thing we're doing as a government is we also, we know people, anybody that went into healthcare field, part of it, a significant, a significant part of it is they went in because of the altruism. They want to serve humanity. They want to care for patients. They want to care for the society. But then they still have to pay their bills. We know part of the driver of people moving out of the country is because of the, of the way they are being remunerated in the country. But the president is addressing this in a, a manner that at the end of the day we will have sustainability. This problem will be solved once and for all. So that 10 years from now, we won't be in the same situation. The, uh, the president has set up a committee to look at the remuneration and welfare package of our healthcare, pro uh, healthcare professionals, but not only our healthcare professionals, but the entire ed um, workers in the country. So, as I said, we're increasing production. We are also harnessing the, uh, the resource of our diaspora, and we're also addressing the welfare package as well. All right. Uh, in one of your recent tweets, uh, according to you, your ministry's uh, four-point agenda for a better healthcare system relies heavily on regulation, consistency, and maintenance. And according to you, uh, roughly 60% of our health care is delivered through the private sector, leaving 5 to 10% and 30% to be delivered by the federal and state government, respectively. You've also said that a lack of consistent health facility regulation has left Nigerians to be preyed upon by ill-equipped, uncertified facilities and poorly qualified healthcare professionals who face no consequences for their actions. Now, as the Minister of State for Health, what are you doing to address this? Yeah, thank you so much. We're directly and frontally going to address the lack of regulation in our healthcare sector. But before I address that, 
Let me talk to you about four-point agenda. When we came in, as the superintendent ministers at the Ministry of Health, we came in with clear four-point agenda, which ties in into a president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, renewed up agenda. The first pillar of agenda is improving governance in the healthcare system. Governance in the way we regulate the healthcare sector. Also, the way we talk to patients, the way we treat ourselves as physicians, as uh, healthcare providers. The second pillar is on uh, improving our population uh, outcomes. The third pillar is unlocking the value chain of our healthcare system, where health will move from a consuming part of the economy to be a good driver of the economy, where our healthcare sector can now continue to contribute to our GDP. What we have today uh, in Nigeria, healthcare sector as a contributor to our GDP is just about 5%. We want year over year to move our healthcare sector as a contributor to our GDP to about 15 to 20 percent. If you see what exists in other developed nations, United States, for example, healthcare uh, sector contributes about 24.5 percent of it of American GDP. That translates into about 2.3, about 3.3 trillion dollars in annual spend. We want healthcare to be a major producer of to be a major generator of jobs, employment for our young men and women in the country who are very well trained and who are eager to work. Then the, our fourth pillar is, of course, looking at AK beyond physical security, but more as, as, uh, more as well as, social, uh, as part of our social security and national security. Like you rightly said, 60% of the care that is being delivered, delivered in our country today, it's by the private sector. And you would have heard some not too good news that that's happened in the last several uh, weeks, where kid kidneys of young citizens of the country were, Ill uh, were illegally harvested and sold to people in our country. Also, we have people who are not certified, who are not physician, a nurse anesthetist in, in Cardinal State performing cesarean section. These, uh, these two examples are just a few, a fraction of what happened today in our health care. Now, if we, if 60% of this, uh, of, of the care delivered in our country is by the private sector, the private sector is not being regulated. The hospitals, the lab, the radiologist centers, everything not being regulated. Once we came in as a government, we quickly moved in to set up the standard and compliance committee to regulate our federal tertiary hospitals. But then, a federal tertiary hospital is just a small part of the healthcare uh, facilities in the country. Now, what we're proposing is that we will be setting up a, 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 national, facil a national facility health regulatory commission. We'll be going to FEC, and we're op hoping that the president will give us approval to set up to set up this. This would have to there will be legislation. This will be backed up with the legislation where this regulatory commission will now begin to regulate all the hospitals, all um, diagnostic centers, laboratories, everything that provide that touches patient in the country will be well regulated. I know we know healthcare is on the concurrent list. The state governments, actually, based on the 2014 uh, National Health Act, state government um, should actually be the one setting up this health facility regulatory commission. But then we know uh, uh, our governors and uh, they they're barrage with a lot of things, cash, money. They can't. They don't have enough money to meet all the needs of what they have to provide to their citizens. So what we've proposed uh, to what we're proposing to our state gov uh, uh, governors that the federal, is that federal government will take over this and into the future, as the states get to a point where they can now begin to set up their own facility, reg facility regulate, le regulatory commission. And once they're able to meet certain criteria, certain benchmark, we will hand over and step aside. But we cannot wait till the time when the state gov uh, government will set up their facility regulation. Our, uh, regulatory commission. We've started, we met, um, I met with um, all the uh, uh, Council of Commissioners. They were in, they, it, was, they had, it was overwhelming in their support to have this uh, commission. They said we need this commission like yesterday and we're moving quickly to set, to set up a national health facility regulatory commission that will begin to quickly regulate 
the health care that is being delivered in our country so that we can oh. begin to benchmark our own regu uh, regulation to what is applicable in any uh, civilized society like ours. All right. So when you say that uh, this four-point agenda for a better healthcare system relies heavily on regulation, consistency, and maintenance, when you talk about maintenance, is this about maintaining health infrastructure across the country? You know, it, uh, beyond maintenance, we are, if you look at, you, you, uh, let's separate this out. Regulatory is different to improving our healthcare system. Um, I will talk a, um, a little bit about the regulation and then move quickly to improving our healthcare infrastructure. Regulation is purely to hold ourselves accountable, all the provide, healthcare uh, providers accountable, all the facilities accountable, ensure they are meeting basic standard in the way they care for our citizens. Today, anybody can just open a hospital without any checklist. And once they open the hospital, Nobody gets there to say, do you have a lab, do you have an x-ray, do you have an ultrasound? Do you have, okay, if you have, if you have this um, medical um, diagnostic equipment, what, do you have a service level agreement? Are you doing the usual calibration so that you're actually giving uh, the right result to patient? Because there's been instances where today there are, there are several labs, hundreds of labs in the country, results are still being manually written. Lab results are still being manually written. This is criminal. It shouldn't be happening in a civilized society like us. And that's what you get when there's no regulation. But as a government, you've heard that a president said on several occasions, what the, this government is going to do, what the government of President Bola Metinumbu is doing is to look at a problem, look at it, provide solution, that, so that the robust solution to fix the problem in such a way that into, so, into the future, so that we'll have sustainable healthcare system into the future. As you know, right, healthy population is the core to harnessing our biggest asset in the country. And our biggest asset in Nigeria today is our human capital. And I know I've talked a little bit about regulation. Let me talk. If you want to jump in, I can stop. But if you, want me, if you allow me two more minutes, I'll talk about what we're doing in improving our healthcare infrastructure. To, uh, All right, please if go you ahead. see this 2020, okay, go ahead. Yes, please. Go ahead. Please go ahead. I can hear yes, you. Yes, please go ahead, doctor. Please go ahead. Okay, I should go ahead. Thank you so much, Jumake. If you see, this 2024 budget, this is, uh, this uh, 2024 budget, we have the highest amount of money allocated to healthcare in the, ever, in the country. And we thank our president, President Bola Ametunu, for this gesture. And this money will be spent to, will be spent to improve our healthcare infrastructure, Equip a hospital with modern equipment, hire more um, professionals, uh, trained uh, professionals in our hospitals, so that we can begin to improve or where we start from, delivering better and comprehensive healthcare. That's what every citizen of Nigeria deserves: meaningful and comprehensive healthcare. And as we, as I said earlier, beyond improving beyond improving infrastructures in our hospital, beyond modernizing our hospital with state-of-the-art equipment. We're also looking at improving welfare packages for our healthcare professionals in the country. Right. So you, you, you just inaugurated the National Health Research Committee. How does this facilitate collaborations across various health disciplines and institutions in the country? Okay. Thank you. As I, I told you about the popular agenda earlier, we also have cross enablers of a popular agenda. Digitalization is a big part of that. Also, research is a big part of that. We've moved quickly as we're fixing, moving along to uh, overhauling, rejigging, and resetting and redeveloping the healthcare system in our country. We're doing it with full bets high. We're not leaving anything, any, anything behind. So that at the end of the day, we'll have a comprehensive, robust healthcare system that will meet international standard. Research is a bedrock of healthcare system. If you don't have research, you can't have a sustainable healthcare system. And that's why we've moved as a government to quickly set up the National Health Research Commission, uh, uh, National Health Research Committee, which was set up on the 4th of January this year. We have accomplished Nigerians 
in all areas, in all walks of life. People in diaspora, people locally that have excelled in academia and have excelled in grant writing and putting um, research, comprehensive research, research, is, uh, research uh, various research together. So we set up that committee we, and they, they, they've been empowered to help redevelop our research landscape, our research ecosystem in the country by, by putting resource together where all research, um, all, um, research grant in, the, uh, in Nigeria, in, um, in the Western world will be available in a database so that people, researchers in Nigeria can go in, see what research, of, research interests they want to get involved. This committee is also going to be working to uh, set up grant writing workshop to help train our researchers on how to write, how to write grant proposals. Um, so that they can, when they write this proposal, they're able to get this, uh, research, uh, research grant. And as we do this, we'll continue to, we would now start bringing research dollars into the country. People want to do research. We just, it's just before we came in as a government, there's been a lot of bottleneck in people coming in, international researchers coming in to do research in our country. You know we have a population of 220 million people. A lot of this uh, research uh, in a drug in pharmaceuticals, we also use those drugs. It's better those researches are done on a, a, on a citizen as well, because we can, because we will, we are also eventual users of those drugs. Beyond setting up the National Ethics Research Committee, we've also moved quickly to set up the National Ethics Research Ethics Committee. The Ethics Committee is involved in giving approval for clinical trials for drugs that. Um, uh, that NAVDAC have been, NAV, uh, people, uh, international research, uh, pharmaceutical companies have uh, reached out to NAVDAC and have reached out to several of, of, of other pharmaceutical companies in the country to do clinical trials here. But without a national, et, a national et, uh, a research ethics committee, you don't have, you cannot do research in the country. So we see that gap, we saw that gap, sorry, and we've, we've set up that committee as well. We're just in Addis Ababa. We met with a, um, so, uh, a, a, a one big organization that wants to start setting up clinical site, clinical uh, trial sites in our country. As a set of this clinical trial site, we, be, we, be, we get to a point that we're in an incubator where big uh, research, um, pharmaceutical research can come into the country. And as this coming, this uh, is a lot of money that will come with this. Multi, uh, hundreds of millions, of millions of dollars will come in to our country, then if we, once we get to this point, we can now begin to offer opportunities to our young Nigerians, young researchers, and begin to build, to also unleash the capacity of our professors in academia that they want to do research, but the support, the support has not been there. This government is going to give them all the support needed, all the opportunities needed, needed and all the resources they need to unleash their potential. What we're also doing in the area of research, we're starting postdoctoral research fellow at the National, uh, National Institute of Medical Research and the National Institute of Pharmaceutical and um, uh, for National Institute of Pharmacy, Pharmaceutical and Drug Research. Those two institutes, we, they've been mandated to start to recruit for the first year about 200 postdoctoral fellows. We're into a four-year program. As we do this, as we get more research um, into our country, more grant coming into our country, we're now creating a situation where we now have feeders, researchers that will feed into all this uh, grant, into all this research that they will be coming to our country. So that 5, 10, 20 years from now, we would have built a complete ecosystem of researchers where we can actually, actually now have original um, um, research being done in our country as well. Mm. That was quite elaborate because I was going to take you up on what uh, the ministry is doing to fortify our Nigerian pharmaceutical uh, scientists and medical research in general because we saw how countries swung into action when COVID-19 uh, was here with us. I mean, so let's go on. What, uh, since we're talking about research and policies, speak to us about the collaboration between the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development and the Department of Traditional and complementary medicine. There are those who strongly believe that you cannot undermine
the role traditional medicine play, especially in the area of research. So what's the ministry doing to strengthen this collaboration? Very good. Uh, if I, the good thing, both, uh, both two departments that you mentioned are domiciled under the Ministry of Health, the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research um, and uh, the uh, traditional, the um, uh, the uh, uh, complementary, uh, uh, complementary and uh, alternative medicine. We know uh, most drugs historically were developed uh, from herbs, but because of new technology, of te uh, because of uh, the modern technology, we don't use herbs again to develop our drugs. There are a lot of biological, genetic, uh, uh, genetics in the way drugs are being developed. But our traditional medicine, they're still, still um, they're potent. They will have some traditional medicines that are, that traditional med herbal medications that are potent. So what we've mandated National Institute of Pharmaceutical uh, Research and Development to do is to now, uh, we've mandated them to collaborate with the Department of Complementary and Alternative uh, Medicine in the ministry for them to start working together to start, to start sharing data so that we can, the Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development can help bring some of, test the potency of some of our herbal medication and then if we find them to be potent, they cannot begin to do phase one, phase two, phase three trials, where some of this cannot be brought to the market. We, this is a way to also build our indig indigenous capacity. We know our herbal medication work, and uh, millions of people today in, in Nigeria use herbal medication. So it, we, it, it's incumbent on, incumbent on us to ensure that these medications that, are, that they're using is tested, is safe, and is free of side adverse uh, health effect on a citizen. So we, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development and uh, um, uh, a Department of Complementary and Alternative Medicine are now working collaboratively together to develop a local herbal uh, resources. All right. Uh, Honorable Minister, let's talk about a more terrifying situation. I mean, major, major drugs are no longer affordable to most Nigerians. The prices of antibiotics and agiosics have gone up by 400 to 500 percent. What are you doing about this to avoid increased morbidity and mortality? Could you, uh, Jumanke, could you please repeat your question? I, was... I want us to talk about a more terrifying situation, and that's a drug crisis in Nigeria. As we speak, uh, most Nigerians cannot afford uh, the prices of drugs in the market any longer. I mean, if you look at the prices of antibiotics and agiosics, they've gone up by 400 to 500%. What are you doing uh, to address this? Yeah, we're doing a lot to address it. it uh, uh, first of all, I feel for Nigerians, the high prices of drugs are medical consumable. It's as a result of uh, several things. We, the, the easy culprit that people will uh, point to is that the fluctuating um, exchange rate. But that's not what it is, really. That's not the main contributor to the problem we're having today. What happened historically, decades ago, we've allowed multinational companies, even local companies, to come in. They continue to import and import year over year. If you go to other countries, even go to Algeria there in North Africa, once you start importing into a drug or you've gotten license to import um, uh, pharmaceuticals into Algeria, after five years, you have to domesticate production of what you're importing into the country. But we've let um, uh, pharmaceutical companies just play by their own rules without regulation. So over the years, we've just continued to import and import and import. Now, we're addressing this, as I told you, this president, President Bola Metunubu, has mandated us to fix this problem, not just for now, but into the future, decades from now, so that people that will come after us will not be in this bad situation again. Number four, one of the things we're doing, we're reviewing a pharmaceutical law We've set up, we're setting up a committee in the next four weeks, in the next three weeks, to have a comprehensive review. We will migrate to a point that our 
and multinational, multi, multinational companies, local pharmaceutical companies that are importing, after three years, they have to domesticate the manufacturing of their drugs in the country. That's one thing. The other thing about this, I, of course, that's medium to long-term plan. We all have to. Nigerians need immediate succor to this. That's what matters to them. And the, the president has been so disturbed about this high prices, uh, high prices of pharmaceutical and medication and, and medical consuming in our, in our country. The president is not happy about it. Uh, a few, uh, several weeks ago, the president mandated us as the Ministry of Health together with uh, the Attorney General Office, Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Trade and Investment to come up with executive order on how we can immediately, immediately, immediately remedy these high prices of uh, pharmaceuticals and medical consumable. The executive order has almost been finished now. It will, it will get to the president's desk probably in one or two weeks. Also, in, the, uh, in our next FEC, we're, my uh, Honorable Minister for Trade and Investment and myself and Honorable Mr. Party, we finalized the backward integration plan to support our medical device company as well, to support our medical device industry in the country. That will be going to FEC probably in the next uh, few weeks. So we have short-term, medium-term, and long-term solution. The President has mandated us to aggressively work to bring down the prices of pharmaceuticals and medical consumable in this country so that the, uh, the citizens the citizen of Nigeria can, can breathe. And also, as we continue to do this, we're also going to have to look at building local capacity. If we had those local capacity in the first, place, in the first instance, we won't be where we are now. Exchange, a fluctuation exchange rate will not directly lead to immediate rise in drug prices or medical consumable prices. But the, the way we're fixing this problem, we're doing the bottom up so that into the future, this will be, we're, 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 we're putting long lasting solution to this problem. And we won't be in this situation again ever in the history of our country. It's, it's, I apologize to Nigerians uh, on behalf of the government for the um, suffering they're facing with this high price of uh, pharmaceuticals and medical consumable. But uh, please also trust us as a government. We're working assiduously to get a um, sustainable uh, solution to this problem. We have to fix it, fix this problem once and for all not just palliating it or just fixing it on a superficial level. All right.